like this down in the water, watch the mud rise up. Dress me like a lamb for the slaughter, pour me in your cup. Should've known we'd bring trouble, and trouble gonna find you here. Trouble. I was one way when you found me, I was not the one you see. And the only thing that happened was this stranger in between. And you can say your eyes are open, you might think your hands are clean. Till the wind blows in, the dirt kicks up in ways you've never seen. I'm scraping the bottom, make my well run dry Shake them coins, I know where you got them Kiss me, kiss me, bye I should have known we'd bring trouble Trouble gonna find you here Yeah, trouble Stranger in between You can say your eyes are open You might think your hands are clean Till the wind blows in The dirt kicks up In ways you've never seen Yeah, trouble Yeah, trouble Hello, hello. I'm going to believe you can hear and see me. We are on. Oh, so good to have you. It has been a little while. I haven't seen you in a little while. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so glad to have you. And tonight is a big night. I've got so many things to talk about, so many things to share with you. We've got new gifts coming that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to show you opportunities to get stuff in the gift store. I've got this little piece of paper in front of me, just FYI, because I've got so much to talk about. I don't want to forget it. Um, info on how to join the Feeding of the 5,000 scene in season three. Yes, it's coming. I will tell you all about it. Uh, updates on everything that's going on. Season three updates, updates on my visit to Italy. Yes, last week I met the Pope. It's true. Got plenty to, ta to, to share with you about that, but I'll keep it quick. And then uh, we got a conversation with fan favorite Yoshi, who plays Philip. Uh, I just uh, yesterday had a chance to talk to him and we recorded it and I've got a fun conversation that I think you're really going to love uh, to hear just about his process of coming to the show and joining this, the show new this season and some of the uh, great scenes that he was able to be part of. And then I've got a really cool documentary for you. This is a documentary that takes you behind the scenes of the Sermon on the Mount filming that we did in uh, for, for the season finale of season two. And this will give you a great taste of what it is that might be happening with the feeding of the 5,000 because you're going to get to meet other chosen family members who have uh, beautiful stories of their own. And it's going to give you a chance to kind of get to know some of the people uh, that you are in this with. 
and it's going to gl give you a glimpse of the whole journey to the Sermon on the Mount, which of course will uh, potentially be your journey to the feeding of the 5,000. So we'll talk all about that. In the meantime, real quick, just got to ask this quick favor of you. Please click like and in the chat button right now in the chat box, if you are on YouTube or on Facebook, just say something, say anything. Type the number one if you want. Say hello, say where you're from. This gets the chat box moving. It gets people um, knowing that the, that the live stream has happened, uh, that it started YouTube and Facebook, especially they have these algorithms. And once they see that this thing is going fast and that people are really engaged and coming on board and excited, they start putting it in front of more people, new people, people who haven't necessarily seen a live stream before. So it'll get in front of more people. So just start saying something. If you're watching in the app, thank you. Everyone should have the app. If you do not have the app, you need to get it because it, is the, because it is the only place to watch season two. Did you know that? So if you're just joining us right now, if you're just coming on board and you're like, I want to watch season two, or I watched the first couple episodes on YouTube uh, of season two, and now I can't find the next ones, they are on the app. Everything is about getting you to the app. So it's free, it's easy. You go to the, um, the wherever you get your apps at uh, in the app store or on Google Play, and you download it to your phone, and it's totally free. It it happens within a minute, and then you're thinking, I don't want to watch a show on my phone, which is totally fine, neither do I. That's why we made it so that you can easily connect to your streaming device, free and easy. It doesn't even require an email address. That's how easy this is. So get the app, watch season two in the app. I promise you it's worth it. I promise you it's much, e much, much easier than you may think. Uh, but also, while you are here, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, click the like button, click the share button, click the notification bell, click the subscription button. All of those things genuinely do help us and they get this show and our channels in front of more people. It really does matter. So I know you probably hear it every time you watch a YouTube video, um, but this, t but with us, it's different. With us, it matters, right? So just, just do that for us, uh, please. It'll make a difference. It just takes you just a quick second. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, all right, so let me tell you this. Hashtag shut Dallas up will not work tonight, okay? So, I, you know, I, I know that Norton, a lot of times you're waiting for an episode of the season to play, and so you're so antsy, you just want me to shut up. Well, tonight is about a family chat. This is what we normally do with live streams. You don't normally have an episode of the show to show you. This is just a normal chat. I'm going to give you some updates. I got some good stuff for you. I got some new items for you, I'm, which, I've, which I've just mentioned uh, and we'll get into in just a second. But uh, tonight is about sharing all this stuff with you. And yet we still are giving you some great content. We've got this documentary coming up. We've got the conversation with Yoshi. But don't type in the chat this time, hashtag shut Dallas up. In fact, if Colin put that up along the bottom, take it down because I'm not shutting up tonight. Now, of course, if you do contribute $100 million to finance the rest of the show, then I don't know, even tonight I wouldn't shut up just because tonight I've got fun things for you. I've got things you're going to like. I've got things you want. So... You know, I'll shut up in the future, but tonight is, uh, I've got some things to share. So let's get right into it. Uh, as you know, I always like to do this, um, and this will be brief, um, but I always like to do this on our live streams because you need to be encouraged as to what you're doing. Your, what you're doing matters when you buy the gifts, when you pray, when you spread the word. Um, it is all making a big, big difference, and this show is continuing to grow. It's continuing to explode here and around the world and people's lives are being changed. And you need to know that. You need to be aware that even if sometimes in your inner circle, people have gotten tired of you pushing the show on them. Worst case scenario, you should know that your efforts are, ma are mattering with others. What you post on social media, which gets, connects to other people, and then they talk about it. And any contribution you make, uh, which by the way, at the end of tonight's live stream, I'm going to share with you all of the contributions you can make to the show, even if you can't pay it forward or give a gift or buy, you know, buy a gift for someone. But this letter matters. This is from a woman named Shelly, who is, uh, she, she said, a, a fan from Ghana. She's in Ghana. And this, this I just thought was awesome. She says, I don't know how to explain this simply, but two weekends ago, I was able to talk my husband's cousin into watching one episode of The Chosen with me. She's always had a bad taste in her mouth for Christians and Christianity. I told her, if you like history and good acting and fantastic detail with costumes, etc., then you will like it. Well, we ended up spending two days binge-watching both seasons. She cried, she laughed, she loved it. She's a high school teacher, and she told me, I don't care what faith you are, every single kid in school should be required to watch this. I am blown away by this show. 
two weeks later, I got this. So Colin is putting up on the screen a picture that she got. And it's, it's a note from her cousin who's saying, look what I got, what should I read first, Matthew? Think about that. Um, you know, anytime you hear someone in the comment section on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, whining about how, well, the show is going to replace the Bible for people, or we're really, cons you know, some blogger or some YouTuber will get on and say, my biggest concern about this show is that people replace scripture with it. And it's just silly. It's not true. Uh, we've actually never heard anyone say that. No one has ever said, oh, thanks to the show, I don't have to read my Bible. But we've heard tens of thousands of people, minimum, that's just a conservative estimate, saying things like, I'm reading my Bible more than ever now, I'm going to church more than ever, I'm loving God more than ever. Um, and we get things like this. We get uh, where people are actually being introduced and wanting to dig deeper because of the show. That's you. You are helping us do that. So thank you for that. It means a lot. And... Um, those kinds of notes just wreck me every time. But I just thought that was, where should, she's saying, where should I even start? <laughs> that is just, that is so exciting. Okay, so I wanted you to know that as we get into what's next. Okay, so gifts. www.thechosengifts.com Thechosengifts.com, www.thechosengifts.com, or the app. You know there is a gift factory in the app, and that is where you can buy everything that's also at the website. And the app, while you're there, is also where you pay it forward. See, in the app is where all of these wonderful things are combined into one. Uh, and thechosen.tv is a, is a great place for those of you who don't want apps, and you can do this at thechosen.tv. You can even watch episodes there totally free at thechosen.tv. So we got plenty of places for you to go, but thechosengifts.com is the jingle. The app is where you get all this stuff uh, as well. And um, I want to remind you of what is currently there that's very recent. So first of all is the pre-sale. This is the DVD, the Season 2 DVD. If you have not gotten it yet, now is the time to order it. It doesn't come out until September, but you need to get it now. You need to order it now because you get, A, a discount. That's not going to occur when the regular edition comes out. We call this the Premiere Edition with an E because it is the first, and it is uh, the only of its kind. Once uh, we get to the release date, which will be sometime early, mid-September, we're... Uh, Shipping delays, I'm going to talk about this later, but shipping delays and all this stuff because of COVID and everything are, are making everything tough to pin down. But it's coming in September, and uh, it's not only are you going to get a pre-sale pre only discount, but it's also got this, sorry, open, also got this booklet, okay? And this booklet only exists in this pre-sale. And my wife and myself and um, one of the new people we brought on, a guy by the name of Jeremiah, which at some point I'll introduce you to, uh, he, with the three of us worked very, very hard along with the design team at Angel and the marketing team at Angel who really put together the structure of this thing and gave us a launching point to give you actually some exclusive content. This is like devotional content, each episode. So there's pictures um, from each, you know, pictures from each episode that you're not, uh, that you, well, some of which you might see somewhere else, but not in this format. Uh, and devotional thoughts and uh, behind the scenes insights and stuff on the episodes. It's only happening on this pre-sale, so do that now. And you may have known, um, we're gonna tell, tell you a lot more about this in the future, but you can start getting it now if you want, um, of course, is the Chosen Kids Activity Book. This is so cool. Um, there's you know, a maze, you know, Lost in Jerusalem, for example. Um, and one of the cool things about this, I, I just randomly opened to this page, one of the great things that I love about this as a kid's activity book is that it's also educational, but not in a boring way. Um, so Jewish history, uh, biblical history, history history, um, even just for a fun thing like this, it says, for example, um, Jesus stayed behind when the caravan with his family moved out. This is from episode five of season one and from the Bible. Mary and Joseph came back to Jerusalem searching frantically, helped Mary and Joseph find Jesus. So we've got, and then this is like a crossword puzzle, okay? Crossword puzzle with, um, with things like who Jesus' mother said he was supposed to be with. Um, uh, six across, a smart group of people who study. Eight, Jesus' earthly dad. I mean, these are things that actually are educational in nature. So there's tons of Stuff like this, scrambled message. I'm just, I'm just randomly peeking through. Um, you know, we, we, this is a little. So, for example, scrolls. Use the letters and numbers to show where each of these pieces belong in the puzzle. We'll get you started. 
and um, then it, it comes together to show a scroll. So, I mean, these are all really cool things that educate um, and inspire and all of those fun things that I know you want for your kids. So the kids activity book that is in the gift store now, gift factory. Um, our Binge Jesus campaign launched last month. We've done Binge Jesus before. We brought it back. What I'm wearing right now, this is a new color. Uh, we got the hat, the Binge Jesus hat. Um, we've got uh, the, this, this Binge Jesus movement is what I'm saying. It's a movement. And um, for us, and we talk about this on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, um, and in the app with the message behind what Binge Jesus is all about, it's really not just about the show. Uh, it's a cute phrase uh, for the show, but honestly, what I talk about in, in the video is that Binge Jesus is really about a kind of a re reordering of your, princip of your priorities. Um, Binge Jesus is about making sure that what your compulsions and obsessions are are not things uh, that we typically are, you know, fill our lives with material things, um, and it's a great replacement for what you're currently obsessed with. Uh, it's, it's it's kind of a call to action. It's a it's a command in many ways, and so uh, we've launched that again. And I just I, that's one of the things that I love about the shirt, and I love about any any time anyone wears it, is that it's a a it's it gets people's attention. I mean, of all of the items that we've put out over the last couple of years, the primary goal of them is, uh, in addition to financing future seasons, in addition to financing our operations, being able to do, you know, all of our videos, the camera and the lights that are, that allow you to see me right now are all paid for by gifts. But Binge Jesus is probably, along with come and see, the most attention getting conversation starting phrase we've got. You know, typically when you see someone out in, a, in, in the store and you see their t-shirt, you're not going to start a conversation with them, even if it's cool. But people talk about binge Jesus and come and see are two phrases that they say the most cause people to ask. Like, what is that? What are you referring to? Come and see what? Or what's, oh, I, I like Jesus. What's this binge Jesus thing about? So the really, that's that's in the gift store. We launched that a few weeks ago. It's uh, been Jesus is back. We've got different colors and whatnot. So really check that out. But we've got a brand new item. Um, well, oh, by the way, uh, this is a brand new item as well. Where'd I put it? Ah, speaking of come and see, we added a wristband. So previous, for a while, there's only been four wristbands. We've added another one. Come and see. See that? So now there's five wristbands, and uh, you can buy these wristbands by themselves, or whenever you buy three or more gifts, they come free. You just make sure you include them in the order, and then when you get to check out, they're free. Okay? So I just want to let you know about that. This right here, the Chosen Poster Collection. I had an idea to do this when we first started the show because there was a, an amazing show that had a poster book like this, and I was like, I, this is amazing. I gotta, we, we, we gotta do one. So this is the Chosen Poster Collection, and it is brand new, launching right now in the store. I mean, I'm telling you, I, it doesn't do it justice on camera, but... Like, I'm just going to randomly open, and I'm confident you're going to love it. So look at these pictures. Um, and they, they gently, you don't have to tear them out. They gently come out. Look at, you know, Mary Magdalene. We've got the, we've got the black and white images. Um, they, they come out. I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to take, take apart this uh, book. But, oh, my goodness, these just look extraordinary. I mean, look at this. Look at this imagery. And... They, they come out easily. Like you just kind of pull them out and they, they, you can frame them. You can, you know, give them as gifts. I mean, look at all this stuff. And I mean, I just, I absolutely love it. And so we give you a couple of examples on the back of it. I mean, this is a, just a, a premium, premium item. And here's the thing. We underpriced it. Okay. So, oh, I mean, like one of the great scenes of the show from season one. So the chosen poster book, there are 40 different images, 40 posters um, front and back uh, in, this, in this book. And uh, we underpriced it, uh, so, but, but it's too late. So the first batch that's currently available is $19.99, okay? So we are currently reprinting them because early indications are this is going to sell really well. So we're already reprinting them, but they are going to be, the next batch is going to be $29.99. Between shipping and delivery and the process of making this thing and 
uh, COVID stuff. I mean, prices are up around, around, around the country. I mean, inflation has gone through the roof because our government seems to like to do that for some reason. So um, we have, we are now experiencing, you know, obviously there's inflation going on everywhere. Prices are up on everything. We are desperately trying to keep prices down. We are trying to, like, we don't, like, we, we I don't, I don't want to say something that might not be true, but I'm fairly certain that on most shipments, we actually lose money on shipping. Um, because I, I, the reason I know that is because I'm always getting yelled at about it by our financial people. Um, at best, we break even on most shipments. There are some shipments we literally lose money on, uh, on the cost of shipping. We, we try to keep shipping costs as low as possible. The costs of our shirts and, and hoodies and zip-ups and hats are all lower than what, the, what typical brands sell them for, especially for the quality that we do. But we're really trying to just get this out as much as possible. Um, but there comes a point where it's not even worth doing it because we, we're, we're, not, we're not generating enough uh, income and profit to, 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 to justify doing the product. Um, we need to get enough of a profit so that we can keep our people paid and keep things going and do future seasons. And so, um, so anyway, this is only $19.99. Now, I can't, every time I give prices, I end up sounding like a TV pitchman. You can have this in your home for just pennies a day. Um, this is, this is only 1999 and it's only going to be, I, grief, I, I sound, I, I, I'm, I'm almost making myself sick as I'm talking to you right now. Um, and I'm, so let me just say again, what I always say, the reason that we are offering these items and these gifts is not because we're just trying to make more money and not because we just want to promote the show. Okay. That is, uh, you know, that, that the benefit of making money, of course, for this show is that we're able to do more seasons. It's the only way we're able to do more seasons, uh, through paying it forward and, and, and the gifts and all that kind of stuff. And the only way we're to keep up our, our people, um, employed and keep this thing going. But, um, that's really like, we're, we're, we just desperately want you to be able to engage more with the show and with the Bible and, um, with others. And so the DVDs and the, you know, the devotional books and the Bible study and the, this poster book and the kids activity book, they're all in intended for you to be reminded of these stories and to be uh, going deeper into the stories and to have discipleship as a part of your life. Um, so many people watch the show and then want more and we want to give you that. Um, but we, every time we do it, it needs to be as good as possible. It needs to be as high quality as possible. It needs to be actually engaging and impactful. Um, and that is one of our, you know, main rules. Uh, it is, well, it's not one of them. It is the main rule. So, um, anyway, uh, but, but the price is just part of it. And so I do want to tell you that there is a, a, a limited number of, uh, these poster books that will be at 1999. Now for some of you, uh, if it's, you know, if you're so inclined, you may want to wait until it's twenty nine ninety nine because that actually helps us a little bit more. Um, it, it helps us, you know, um, be able to afford to do more of these and more stuff, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do is fine. Get the nineteen ninety nine now. Uh, when we run out the, the next time, uh, we do a batch, it will be twenty nine ninety nine. Okay. And speaking of, um, so the, the fact that because shipping costs have gone up, uh, shipping has delayed, uh, I mean, there's been shipments that we, you know, there's been items that we thought were going to be ready and were delayed by months uh, because of things getting hold, held up in China, things getting held up in our own port here in the States. Um, it has just been a nightmare for all items across the last, you know, year and a half. And uh, prices are going up. As you know, lumber has gone through the roof, which impacts printing, um, paper and all that. So uh, things, the, I mean, you know, price of goods, it's just going up and we're trying to keep it down as much as possible, but at some point we have to, and that's the same thing with the Bible study. So the Bible study right now, $15.99, um, we're going to have this uh, as long as we can for $15.99, and, uh, but currently the factory is increasing the price to $17.99. Uh, so there will be a time, not in the not in too distant future, when the when the chosen Bible study. This is the Bible study that, uh, for groups or for individuals, it takes you deeper into the show, and into the Gospels. Probably more, way more into the Gospels than it does the show. The show is a guide, but this is a Bible study. Uh, we'll be going up to seventeen ninety nine uh, relatively soon. Not a huge deal, but it's it is an increase. So get this for fifteen ninety nine now while you can. Uh, I don't like talking like price. It just feels so weird. So. Um, uh, binge Jesus face masks. So we retired face masks in the store because, you know, COVID was pretty much going away and people, all these mask mandates were being lifted. And now with people back in school and mask mandates coming back in a lot of places, we figured, well, might as well give people an opportunity to share a good message when people are always looking at their faces. 
So look, if you don't want to wear a mask, that's up to you. I'm not forced. This is nothing to do with this is giving you an option if you do. Uh, for those of us who fly like I do regularly, I have to. Um, so anyway, uh, we are, we are, I don't have them on me because they're currently being printed. Um, but they will be available tomorrow. So tomorrow they were, they're arriving in our warehouse, the binge Jesus face mask. So we got the small, uh, which just kind of goes over your ears. And then we got these cool ones that are larger that have the two bands that go around the head, uh, like before super comfortable and they say binge Jesus on them. So you can get them for your kids as they go back to school. What better message to give when they go back to school than, uh, telling other fellow kids to binge Jesus. So, all right, those are on the gift store, uh, tonight, get them now. All right. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything more to say about that? No. Um, right before I tell you about the whole feeding of the 5,000 thing, we've got, I just want to give you some updates on what we're up to. So as I'm sitting here now, I'm sitting here on the camp site in Texas, the Salvation Army campsite where we filmed most of season two, where we are currently building all our sets <coughs> for future seasons. Um, my family and I moved to Texas. We are now in Texas. I've been here for a little over a month. We are renting a house right now as our current house is being built. And, uh, but I'm sitting, uh, talking to you now on one of the little houses here on the Salvation Army campsite where construction is soon to begin. That keeps getting delayed because of so many factors. And, uh, again, uh, the construction of my house has gotten delayed. So all of that is happening, but, uh, construction for season three is happening soon. We still believe we are on track to begin filming in the early spring, late summer of 2022. We're aiming for March. That's, I would say that's likely. It's not guaranteed, but that's likely for when we are going to be start, when we are going to start filming season three. We're uh, working on the writing right now. Should be done with that relatively soon. Pray for us as we write and finish up our writing. It is so important. We we just want to get this right. We want to we want favor, uh, wisdom, clarity, uh, you know, favor from God that we will be able to keep delivering content that impacts people that lives up to the promise of season one and season two. Um, and so we need it. It's very exhausting work. And uh, we want to get season three going as soon as humanly possible. So pray for that. Pray for the construction. Pray that there aren't any more delays. Um, and we've also got this fun thing that we are developing now. Remember the Christmas special last year? People loved the Christmas special that we did last year. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's called Christmas with the Chosen. And all these amazing artists, we showed uh, The Shepherd, the, the, the pilot episode that got this whole thing started, the Christmas pilot episode. This year, we are coming back. We've got some amazing artists, and so we will have some announcements about that. But we are developing that now. Uh, people who are returning, for example, just right off the top of my head from last year, like Phil Wickham and For King and Country. Uh, so we've, and we've got some new artists that are coming on that are phenomenal. I can't wait to tell you more about it. But we've got a big, big Christmas special. Got something in my mouth here. Big... I'm sure you lo you're loving this. Big Christmas special coming uh, that we are uh, working on right now. We will be filming that uh, so in September, bringing in the artists to our set in Utah for music videos. Uh, and it's just going to be fantastic. And yes, I went to Italy. I have been to Italy now, and <laughs> I, I just got back, and I was there for two days. It was an in-and-out trip for me. Jonathan, who plays Jesus, was, of course, there. He was there for a, about a week longer than I was. We were invited by the Vatican to come meet the Pope. Words I did not expect to hear in my lifetime, or expect to say in my lifetime, not only from the career perspective, but from a Protestant perspective. I'm a, I'm a Protestant evangelical, so I never expected to meet the Pope, um, but this was an extraordinary opportunity to get this show in front of more people. The press that we've received from this meeting and from our visit to Italy has been extraordinary. Literally millions of people all over the world are reading about it, seeing video about it, uh, and that is such a great thing for the show and for our relationships uh, with so many brothers and sisters we have all over the world in other countries. Um, I want to address very quickly because some people have asked questions. Uh, we've gotten the gamut from outright ridiculously ignorant and stupid comments about it to genuine um, uh, questions. And uh, it, the, the ridiculous, stupid, ignorant comments we just laugh at. Um, but the, uh, the, the genuine questions uh, some of you have, I think, are fair. And we want to address those very quickly. Um, first of all, as I've said repeatedly, this show is not formally aligned or endorsed by or connected with officially any church or denomination. Okay, um, that I've said that from day one. Uh, whether it's inside the evangelical tradition, of which I am a part, uh, we're not associated with any church or denomination 
or whether it's any other faith tradition, LDS or Catholic or Jewish or Greek Orthodox or atheist, not, you know, any non-faith traditions, our cast and crew and our team run the gamut. There are hundreds and hundreds of people who are all contributing to the show, not only to the making of it, uh, to the marketing of it, to the distribution of it. And then there are thousands of people who are contributing to the distribution of it around the world. And we got a chance to talk to a lot of them on this trip. And um, they come from all walks. They run the gamut of every faith tradition you can think of and every non-faith tradition you can think of and atheists. I mean, I'm telling you, everyone uh, is represented. And that is an awesome thing. And if you're not down with that, then you're not down with the show. Now, you may think, well, why would that be awesome? Um, this is a show about Jesus. Well, when I say it's an awesome thing, it means that we will use and work with anyone who will get this show in front of a billion people. Period. Now, the problem would be is if it influenced the content, if the content was impacted because we were trying to please somebody or we were trying to not offend somebody or because we made some sort of, and that's one of the reasons why we don't formally align with anybody is because we don't want anyone, uh, evangelical, Catholic, LDS, atheist, or otherwise, any formal organization to have some sort of official sway over the project. So uh, that is, remains the case. Uh, the show, the content of the show is completely Un, uh, unhindered or unchanged by anybody or any organization or anything. This was a meet and greet and an opportunity to just uh, chat for a few moments with the Pope, who, uh, of course, can help get this show and uh, into uh, millions and millions of people all over the world. That was a great opportunity. And uh, the picture you're looking at now, yes, is with the moment that the Pope asked if I was Judas. <laughs> that is a true story. Uh, he met Jonathan first, and then he starts. I, I started to talk, and he interrupts, and he goes, "Is he Jesus?" And I said, "Yes." He goes, "Are you Judas?" He was. He had his hand on my arm while he said it. He was very affectionate. He was teasing. I loved it. It's my love language. Uh, I don't know how he knew it was my love language, but but uh, he took a guess and it worked. I loved it. I thought it was very funny. It wasn't because I'm a Protestant. He wasn't making any kind of ulterior statement. It was just affectionate uh, teasing, which I love, and uh, I caught me off guard because I I know he doesn't speak English, so I was I was like prepared this kind of thing I was going to say about how I'm a Protestant, but how I believe that the show uh, connects with everyone and the show is made for everyone um, uh, from, from all faith traditions who can learn more about Jesus, which I did end up staying, saying anyway. Um, but uh, that's what I was prepared to say as clearly as I could. And he just n took my knees out with the Judas comment. So it was just awesome. I just loved it. And then we walked out. There were so many people uh, f uh, who recognized us. And it was amazing to see, see this, especially in Italy, to get recognized. And we got kind of swarmed by people who wanted selfies, who wanted to express their love and passion for the show. It was just an extraordinary trip. And I got a chance to talk to distribution partners uh, in other countries on Zoom and in person. I mean, I'm telling you, what's happening with The Chosen around the world is incredible. And this trip represents it. There was zero negative about it. The trip was extraordinary um, and uh, is going to pay off in massive ways for the growth of the show. And if by some chance you do happen to have some issue with people of other faiths or people who don't have faith or whatever it is uh, who are working on the show or who are coming in contact with the show or who are, we are meeting, worst case scenario, you have a big issue with it. You should be thrilled that they're seeing the show. You should be thrilled that they are being exposed to the show that you do agree with. So uh, we don't need to talk much more about it, but I just wanted to let you know that it was a great opportunity and I hope you're excited about it. Uh, as excited about it as, as, as we are, because that is the point of the show, is to get in front of as many people as possible. And the content will speak for itself and ultimately draw them to the Bible, where the Bible, sure as heck, speaks for itself. Do you want to join us in season three for the Feeding the 5,000? Yes, if you did not know, which I, I think most of you do, we are filming the uh, Feeding the 5,000 scene. The Feeding of the 5,000 is not only one of the signature moments in the Gospels, it is one of the signature moments in the life of the show. Uh, as you may know, uh, this show was launched by, I mean, it came, I guess it came out of one of my biggest failures uh, in, in my career, my biggest failure in my career, um, where my movie uh, tanked at the box office and I was left without a future. I didn't know what my future held in this business, if I had a future at all in this business. And God spoke to me through uh, my wife and through a friend I hadn't even met, just someone on Facebook about the story of the feeding of the 5,000. It's just a very personal story, and it is uh, that, that whole message of it's not your job to feed the 5,000, it's only to provide the loaves and fish. That has been a mission statement for our show. And one of the ways that it's a mission statement is that... I'm so sorry. I know this... Hey, man. 
authenticity here. I don't know what, what, what was happening, but anyway, sorry about that. Um, so we're bringing our loaves and fish, and you're bringing your loaves and fish, and we're together, we're going to watch God feed the 5,000. And one of the cool things about the opportunity to be at the feeding of the 5,000 is you have an opportunity to provide your loaves and fish to get there. Um, so what, just like the Sermon on the Mount, but with a few things different this time around, um, if you pay it forward at the level of $999.99 or more, any more than, any, that level or any more qualifies you to come to the feeding of the 5,000. So as I've said many times, I want to be very clear about a few things. So we are not a nonprofit or a, or a church or a ministry, okay? Um, paying it forward is how you pay for the show if you so choose. No one is requiring you to pay for the show. If you cannot pay for the show, we don't want you to. That's why people pay it forward. And paying, but paying it forward is essentially the means that we say to people, if you want to pay for the show, this is how you do it. And these are the benefits that come from it. Um, you get thank you notes. You get the benefit of, uh, which you can read in the app, by the way, your thank you notes that people give when they know that you've paid it forward for them to be able to watch it for free. Um, that's what one of the biggest thing is you get, you, you allow us to be able to get, give this show for free. We want to reach a billion people with this show, minimum. Um, my, one of the executives at, at Angel Studios, Brad, will say uh, our first million, or sorry, our first billion. We want to reach a billion people with the authentic Jesus. And the only way we're going to do that is if it's free. And the way it can be free is if you're paying it forward. So uh, you, don't, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. And if you don't have the means, please don't. But if you do, uh, this is how you do it. And uh, at each level, we try to give you, um, you know, as, as many benefits as we can. Um, just to, as, as a thank you for that. And every bit counts. No one's pay it forward is more valuable or more um, meaningful than, anyone's el than anyone else's. Every single one goes towards allowing people to be able to see it for free and goes towards us being able to finance future episodes and seasons. Um, but because, you know, $1,000 uh, of paying it forward allows us to do these shows and allows us to put on something like the, the, the feeding of the 5,000. We are giving you that opportunity to attend. Now there is a limit. I mean, if we made it possible for anyone to come to the feeding of the 5,000, we would probably have 20,000 people show up. We just can't do that. So we do need to be, maintain some level of, uh, of capacity here. So, uh, yes, $1,000 or higher gets you, uh, an opportunity to be at, well, get, you qualify to be there for the feeding of the 5,000 filming. Okay, so I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that you probably already have. You might say, all right, if I pay it forward $5,000, will that get me five pay it forward? Will that get me five opportunities or five tickets or registrations for the Sermon on the Mount? The answer to that is no. Okay, so now we still would love for you and we still get people who pay it forward at 5000 or above. Other things happen when you pay it forward at higher levels. Okay, other benefits come. But uh, this is a, if you are paying it forward, for thousand dollars or more, if you want to pay it forward for ten grand or five grand, or I mean, we've gotten pay it forwards at fifty grand, but if you want to, whatever you want, that 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 gets you certain benefits and perks, and one of them is to be able to go to the feeding of the five thousand. When you register for that or RSVP for that, which comes later, that does not come right now. If you're at, if you're in the app right now, or if you're writing down right now, thechosen.tv slash pif pay p i f or pay it forward, whatever one you want to write in, it'll take you there whether it's in the app or on the website, thechosen.tv slash pay it forward, or in the app, whatever it is, um, or if you're just writing it down, waiting until this live stream is over to do it, that's all fine and good. That is not when you are officially RSVPing or registering. That qualifies you. And then we will follow up with you. We will answer your questions. We will send you updates. And then there will come a time when it is officially time to RSVP and register. That's when you will have that opportunity, okay? Now, when you get there to that opportunity, then you will have the option to add more people to your party. So let's say you pay it forward for $1,000 or $5,000 or whatever the number is, and that gets you qualified, okay? Well, let's say you want your wife and kids to come or you want a friend to come or whatever that is. When you register or pay it forward, you will have the opportunity to add more to your pay it forward. It will, I, I, what I believe it is is $100 more, uh, $100 more to bring someone else. And um, 
and each person is $100. So if you paid, if, if when you go to register, you add $300, that gets you three more people, okay? Now, you might be thinking, this is, why, why are you adding money? Why are you making it more expensive? It's the same thing that I talk about when, we're, when we talk about gifts. Um, the event that we did in, for the Sermon on the Mount uh, for season two um, costs us lots of money, okay? It's worth it. Um, it's an opportunity to have you there. Uh, it's an opportunity to, to, to convene as a family. It makes for a great scene, but it is extremely expensive. The staff we have to hire, the security, the COVID protocols, we don't know. And just to answer that question now, I cannot promise you what's going to be the situation in whenever we film this. This will be sometime between March and June or July, most likely. Um, uh, and most likely, uh, I would say 95% chance it's going to be filmed here in Midlothian. I do not know what the COVID protocols will be. We have rules and regulations and laws. There are things that are literally... Um, some, some, many of this we choose whether we're forced to or not. Some of the things we're forced to do, okay? Um, we obviously want everyone to be safe. We are in a bubble when we are filming. Uh, regardless of the law, regardless of your feelings about it, regardless of any controversy about it, regardless of all the debates that come, it, it's, it's irrelevant to when we are filming, we cannot afford to have anyone sick. We can't afford to lose anyone for a week. It is extraordinarily expensive to lose one person for a day or two of filming. So we can't do it. So we have to be very, very safe and very, very protected. And so uh, I do not know what the protocols will be early next year where this all will stand. So there is a chance that you will have to, like last time, uh, get uh, tested before you come, get tested when you arrive. Uh, so, you know, wear masks uh, other than when we're filming. So, you know, know that now. Uh, know that now as you're paying it forward. I want to make sure we're up front with you from the beginning. We cannot promise what the situation will be. So if, you, if you're hung up about that particular part of it, I understand. Everyone has different feelings about it, but it just means there's a chance you wouldn't be able to come if you were not willing to be tested um, or uh, masked and whatnot. Okay? So just know that going into it. I just want to make sure I don't forgetting forgetting anything. I'm not forgetting anything. Um, yeah, I... Oh, I wanted to... Yes. So if I know, I know you might be thinking I can't afford to pay it forward that amount and I can't afford to buy gifts for people. Um, I get it. And I know that sometimes that might be a bummer. Uh, you might think I want to be part of the feeding the 5,000 scene as well. As I'm hoping you can understand, I assume you understand, uh, we can't make it available to everybody. We wouldn't be able to uh, withstand all the capacity. But um, there are other ways you can contribute to this project, and I will let you know about those at the end of the at the end of this live stream. Some of which you already know. But just bear in mind that this costs a lot of money. Um, the we, we we try to make it an amazing experience for everybody, but the the protocols, the buses, the um, all of the, the the props, the things that we have to do to get ready for thousands of people to show up on our set. And, uh, you know, we also have special guests to, because there's usually about six to seven hours where the people who initially arrive are, aren't doing anything. They're just waiting for more people to show up. And uh, so we want to make sure that they we give them wonderful performances and content and opportunities. And so all of that is just extremely expensive. And it's all worth it. It's all part of the show. Um, but that's one of the reasons why even when you add someone to come along, we, we are, we, it, it does cost us money. So we have to charge just a little bit more for, for, that, for that privilege. Okay, um, but I, I just I do love the irony that to get to the uh, to the feeding the five thousand you are providing your loaves and fish and together we'll watch God feed the five thousand. It's going to be an awesome opportunity. Um, we are going to we are currently looking for and we are putting together ideas for those of you who can't afford to do so that there will be opportunities such as you know some sort of lottery. Again, don't get hung up on the term lottery if you're if you think that that's some gambling thing. But we will, we will be looking for opportunities to give away. We've done it in the past. And there are also opportunities in the Chosen Auction Group. If you just go on Facebook, there's this great, uh, some of our most fervent fans and supporters have started this auction group where they uh, auction off items and they raise money for people to have the opportunity to go to the Sermon on the Mount. So, I, or, sorry, yeah, the feeding of the 5,000. So I really want you to, uh, to check that out if, you have the, uh, if they have an opportunity. But we will also... Uh, be looking for opportunities to for scholarships. There, will, there are always some people who just say, look, I want to pay it forward for someone to be able to come. Uh, so just stay, uh, you know, stay tuned in for, for, for opportunities for that. We do want to give, uh, so we don't, this isn't just for the people who can pay it forward at that amount. I wanted to read this to you real quickly before I bring on uh, the conversation with Yoshi. 
because this speaks to, again, why it is you pay it forward, why it is that we are telling you about these opportunities every time I talk to you. Um, you know, we don't have a big studio writing a check. We don't have a TV network writing a big check for the rest of these seasons. Um, we have to do this with you. And so we got this note, and I want you to know, hear about it, because it's just so cool. Jason says, hello to the creators of the Chosen series. My wife and I wanted to share a story with you about how your series is having a positive effect. Our youngest son was brought up in a Christian home, but chose to go down a dark path in his early teens, despite the best of attempts to correct his behavior. He is now in his early 20s and finally got arrested and has been in jail about two months. Interestingly, he has returned to the faith of his youth and is even working with the in-house pastor and leading fellow inmates to Christ. He called tonight and started telling us, we might like this program that has been shared in the prison. The program is called The Chosen. My wife started smiling so big. She was actually wearing one of the I was one way, but now I'm completely different shirts. We asked him several questions, mentioning scenes from the series. Yes, he knew them. Evidently, the inmates are able to watch your series while in jail, and it is having an impact. Our son said the program is being allowed there. When the new guys are coming in, The Chosen is showing them who Jesus is, and they are responding. We have been financially supporting The Chosen now for a couple months because we wanted to partner with making a difference in others' lives through this amazing show. We had no idea it would be our own son who would be impacted. Thank you so very much for making this investment. You truly are making an eternal difference. Oh, that's you too. That's why we give you these opportunities to participate with us. And um, it's one of the great things about this model, the pay it forward model and the gifts model and all that stuff is the bad news is I have to come to you on these live streams and tell you about all these opportunities, which always makes me feel weird, but the good news is it gives you an opportunity to participate with us in what's happening and the lives that are being impacted all over the world and even within the United States in uh, places like prison. People are being impacted. So thank you for that. So uh, my conversation with Yoshi, uh, just had this conversation with him. It's terrific. And uh, he is such a great addition to the show, and I want you to hear more of what he has to say. He's got some great stories about, he's got an incredible story about how he got cast in this show and what God was doing and who God sent him. Uh, potential spam. So this is what I'm getting from my phone. Um, a pretty bizarre encounter with someone who uh, kind of started steering him towards God right around the time that uh, we were reaching out for him to potentially be in the show. So quite, a, quite, a, quite some ama uh, an amazing story, an amazing guy. Let's hear from Yoshi right now. All right, Yoshi, welcome. This is like your kind of a formal welcome into the Chosen family. Your character has been introduced. I've talked about you a bunch on live streams. You've kind of had your own interactions with fans, but this is the first time we've had you actually on a live stream with the opportunity to talk to the viewer. Um, your arrival in The Chosen was really cool in two ways. Number one, uh, your arrival in an episode was like you got kind of this Wild West music accompanying it. It was clear that your character was cool. <laughs> like you, immediately you're kind of jousting with Simon, who's our hero uh, of the story. So that was cool. And then I think just your arrival into The Chosen world was pretty cool because instantly fans were in the chat saying like, I love this guy. This guy's great. Um, like it's been kind of a... I think one of the better arrivals that you can ask for. Yeah. I mean, it was all in the writing really. I just, I, I loved out and I got to play uh, a character that um, is as cool as Philip is. And uh, you know, I got some of my first lines in the show where uh, I don't know if it was you, Tyler or Ryan, who has the credit for writing the fat and goose line. And I uh, <laughs> uh, hope to have a, <laughs> A wife someday line, but I can think of worse ways to um, enter the yeah. the uh, fraternity than, than those three lines right there. So yeah, I, I'm very blessed to uh, have that very cool intro. Yeah, and so what about the whole like the just the the fan base? Um, I, I I always tell actors who are joining, I'm like, you're gonna get like 98 percent of it is gonna be awesome. Two percent of it's gonna be a little crazy, but. Uh, the, the chosen fans are extremely like welcoming and loyal and passionate. And 
supportive and encouraging and all of that stuff. Have you experienced that? Um, have, has it been kind of cool or, or surreal? What are what are your thoughts on just uh, kind of experiencing the the reaction from the fans? The response has been absolutely overwhelming, and the the chosen fans have been so kind and filling my DMs. Um, and it's a bit it's hard to keep up with. So I, I actually I, I have to say to everyone out there, I'm not reading most of them because it's just so much. Yeah. Um, but I, I really appreciate it. And I've definitely read a few here and there. And um, I'm just so happy to be along on this ride with everybody. And thank you to the people I have spoken to and to the people I haven't. Um, thank you to you as well. So when I, uh, when we were casting for season two and looking for Philip and Nathaniel and some of these other roles, um, you know, I've told this story before, but you were cast as Philip uh, in our minds you know, probably 20 seconds into your audition. Uh, there was just something that you just exuded that fit what we were looking for. And my wife, Amanda, who is the co-casting uh, mind of, of, of the project, along with our casting directors and myself, uh, she, you know, her instincts are impeccable. And she was immediately all over the, the Yoshi train as uh, Philip. <laughs> and so I remember when we, you and I started talking, you were telling me that you were having your own kind of personal experience with the, the, the show spiritually, um, you know, the connection to the character. Uh, you don't have to obviously share, you know, personal details, but can you talk a little bit about the, the, the experience of getting cast and how I feel like I remember correctly, you were starting to have a relationship with the show or some impact from it and with a family member um, even before you, you got cast. What was, can you kind of talk us through that a little bit? So it's pretty wild um, how everything just sort of synced up uh, at the time that it did. But my aunt, Isabel, um, apparently tried to get me involved in the show at season one. She had reached out to me and asked me to audition for season one. And at the time, my head was my, my headspace just wasn't um, oriented around the idea that a, a Christian show could be something worth pursuing and my agent, you know, hadn't heard about the show at the time. And so I think I just sort of, uh, you know, wrote it off to my crazy aunt uh, trying to get me involved in some, you know, low budget thing that maybe she had a friend who was involved with. I didn't really pay it any mind. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, when season two came around, my agent um, found the audition and, and, and got me on it. And, um, yeah, it, it was interesting timing because – when season one was going on, I hadn't really, my headspace wasn't at all oriented around the Bible. I had never read it. Um, I grew up Catholic, but um, never connected with the material as, as a child and quickly kind of fell out of it. Um, but it just so happened that around the time that the audition came through for season two, I had been studying the Bible uh, pretty rigorously. I had found the Jordan Peterson lectures on um, Genesis, and that kind of kick-started my interest because he sort of took like a psychological approach to the material. Right. And I started to started to understand the parables of the Bible um, very briefly. But by the time the audition came around, I was so engrossed in it, um, and I had some pretty wild experiences that were sort of telling me that um, this was all meant to be. I was on a hike one time um, in Los Angeles, uh, a hike called the Wisdom Tree. Um, and I was in a pretty bad place at the time. I was very confused. I was going through a breakup and um, was looking for answers. And um, I was on this hike and I was reading a book. I can't remember what book I was reading, but I was just sitting there on my own, just minding my own business. And I started to hear some commotion um, to my left and it was lots of girls' voices kind of like in excitement and screaming. And then the, the voices sort of went away, and then I was kind of on my own again. And out of, out of nowhere, I heard a voice go, hey, what are you reading? And I look over to my left, and it was Justin Bieber um, standing there and looking at me and inquiring about the book I was reading. So I, I said, oh, I started answering him. I was telling him what I was reading we started having a dialogue kind of from far away and I was like, yeah, I can't really hear you. Why don't you come join me? So the, the short version of the story is that um, Justin Bieber came and sat with me 
And um, he was also in a dark place at the time too. So we kind of started connecting on that. And he ended up stopping me like mid sentence at some point and just saying like, Hey man, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I feel in my heart of hearts right now that I'm supposed to introduce you to church. And the, the short version of the story is that Justin Bieber brought me to his church, church home with pastor Judah. Um, and just sort of introduced me to what they were doing over there. And, and that was my introduction to the new Testament was basically every Wednesday going over there and hearing pastor Judah, um, just talk about the stories, the parables of the new Testament. So I had Jordan Peterson in one year teaching me the old Testament. And then I had church home teaching me the new Testament. And then I started reading the stories on my own. And then that's when the audition came. So it, everything was just very synced up when the, uh, when the opportunity came and then my head was already in it. Um, and I very much connected to the material of Nathaniel initially, who I initially auditioned for. Um, uh, but obviously, as we know now, Philip was the, the one I was meant to play. So yeah. it's, it's been a, a wild ride and I'm extremely blessed, uh, to be telling this story with you guys. Yeah. Um, what about the character of Philip, you know, now that you're in it and, um, you know, Philip has become, as, as I mentioned, a fan favorite. Uh, we have these series of what we call Philip quips. I mean, in the, in, in, in your first episode, there were probably about five, like just truth bombs that your, your, your character got to drop. Jonathan and I were just in Italy. I think you, you might've known that, but we visited the remains that supposedly the remains of Philip and little James are in this church in Italy. They were transported from, uh, some other country. I'm blanking on it now, but um, so we had a chance to just see the, the remains. And th I don't personally have any kind of connection to graves or to, to remains because um, I, I believe Philip is alive, you know. Um, but it was yeah. a very meaningful moment for us because we thought of you and Jordan. And we thought about the fact that I, I remember thinking like Yoshi needs to, to be here at some point um, because this was a real person. Like this was a man who had a huge impact on the world. Uh, forever and in, in his uh, you know missionary journeys and all of that. So it's kind of a two part question is your connection to the character that we've written, which uh, so, you know, some of which is from the Bible, a lot of which is, is, is not, but also just the actual human being of, of Philip. Have you had those moments of, of connection and of, of research and making this uh, bringing to life someone that, you know, was actually alive. As far as the research went into you know, preparing for the role there, there's not too much historical reference to, uh, look at when it comes to the disciples, most of them at least. Um, but I was lucky enough to have David Amito's John the Baptist storyline to refer to considering that Philip came from that brotherhood, that order. Um, so that's kind of what I relied on in the preparation for the role was I looked at, um, John the Baptist's brotherhood, um, as far as I can tell, there's three major mystic sects in the Jewish tradition. There's the Pharisees, the, uh, the Sadducees, I believe you pronounce it. Yep. And then there was the Essenes, which is a group that's not really talked about as much. But um, a lot of scholars put John the Baptist with the Essenes. And so I sort of focused on the Essenes. And I looked at their tradition. And I looked at what that brotherhood was like. And you know, they were a sort of a practical implementation of John 3, 6, which you guys cover with that beautiful scene between Jesus and Nicodemus, um, focusing on the distinction between the flesh and the spirit. And so they sort of focused on the, like, initiation of the brothers into the purification of the spirit, um, sort of fleshing out the temptations and the passions. They would cultivate their own fields. They would, you know, manufacture their own clothing. They would rise before the sun. They wouldn't speak to each other except mostly just prayers of gratitude. They would, they would, uh, take, you know, cold plunges every morning, um, and, and, uh, study nature. And so I sort of looked at that process that, you know, by all likelihood, if Philip is one of John's students, he was undergoing throughout many, many years of his life. And I kind of created a backstory for Philip that he came from like a troubled past and then had to go through these initiations for many years before he was prepared to go out and follow Jesus. So by the time I get to Jesus, 
unlike maybe lots of his other followers, right. I've sort of, you know, by that time I've subjected my psyche to a whole lot of um, pain right. um, so that I can be prepared. So unlike the other disciples, we, you know, throughout season two, lots of the ideas that you guys are exploring was, you know, complaining, like all the disciples complaining and, and, and getting used to this new lifestyle of having to follow Jesus and just how tumultuous that is to be on the road with him. I kind of had that contrast to work with where I get to look around and say like, oh, these guys just haven't been through it yet, these guys and gals, but I kind of have. So that gave me a lot to work with um, as far as how Philip um, is just a little more prepared than the others. You, you and I, I, I certainly wouldn't call this conflict, but you and I oftentimes had back and forth about your approach to the, I would call it the, the, the language of the show. Um, especially early on, I was often saying to you, um, you know, I, I want to see more of Yoshi. I want to see. Like, yeah, bring out the Yoshi. Yeah, I, ca I cast you for a reason. And I feel like yeah. you, you kind of had this, I don't know if formal is the right word, but you were treating it with a little bit more formality and, and maybe some reverence. And I was like, we want, I, I want to see the, your personality and, and, and the humanity of this character. Um, talk about that real quick, just about yeah. the, some of the back and forth you and I had on the set the first couple of days we were working All the together. things that, everything that the, every, the fans love about my performance, Dallas was completely instrumental oh. in bringing me to, to those places. No, you actually were, because I went into the whole process of the show with a lot of ideas as, I was a bit confused as to who Philip was initially. Mm -hmm you really helped me flesh that out by sort of dropping the ideas of maybe I had of Philip being like a teacher um, or something like this. And, and you helped me realize that, um, like you said, like you and Amanda brought me on because of just who I am. That journey itself for me was um, such a growing um, experience because I think I, I grew and learned as an actor just playing Philip because you guys helped me realize that when I just got to show up and, and drop all my preconceived notions and just yeah. let the spirit move through me and just do whatever it is that is going to happen um, and, and not to think so much and just to be. And yeah, that was an ongoing theme uh, over and over again. You would say, yeah, but you know, let's just bring Yoshi out. And then that would always help me just kind of yeah. drop my guard and, um, and just, be present with the fellow actors and listen and, and react genuinely. Yeah. That's, and that's, I think you would agree The one of the things that makes that easy is our, is the cast. I mean, the, the, the other cast members um, are all just great scene partners. And so I know it makes it easier. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up here in just a minute, but uh, I'd love to hear your favorite scene to do uh, from season two. Like what was your favorite scene to be in just the, the, the process of it? And then I'd love to hear just your your favorite scene to watch of season two. Um, I know the fans love actually hearing some of the cast members' favorite moments from the, from the season. So I'd love to hear, first of all, again, what your favorite scene to do was. And then when you watched season two, what was something that really impacted you? Uh, hands down, my favorite scene was the one shot. That was the most fun I've ever had as a performer, as an actor. Um, I, I I learned that day that I really like when the pressure is high, when the pressure is on, when everybody has to come together as a collective machine, a well-oiled machine, and everybody has to really have their A game going. I like when the pressure is high like that. I think it brings the best out of everybody. And I like that we had to depend on each other um, and just plow through any sort of mistakes that might have been happening during the process. Um, yeah, do, and do, do you remember, um, some people have seen the behind the scenes video of that, but I had a really, like you were the one that I, when I started talking to, I broke down after we finally got it. Cause it was so hard to get that shot and it took us so many times and there was so much pressure. Cause again, we didn't have a good take until the, our last possible take. And I know there were two reasons it's why there were two reasons, chosen fashion for that to happen. Yeah, exactly. But there were two way. reasons why I just started crying when I talked to you was one, um, there was a moment halfway through that shot where if people watch closely, uh, I don't want to be telling tales out of school, but that where you were there, were, he were halfway through a line talking about 
like <laughs> Big James says, yeah, I bumped into this guy and he reopened my wound. And, and you start talking about like, yeah, I, that's the same guy that I talked. And, and there's a moment when I think the bike goes into the ditch and, and, <laughs> and you lose the line for a second. And there's this, and you did such a great job of like staying in it. Cause I saw it. Cause I know the scene so well. And I know the, I know you right. and I know the line. So I know that you were like, where'd the line go? And I'm like, oh, please. And you just stayed in it and you recovered it. It was, and, and it was great. No one would ever know the difference. And so I was so, pr- I was so, I don't know about that. Well, but. I was so thankful. <laughs> I was so thankful that you stayed present because it could have been so easy to, to lose it. So I was thankful to you personally just for that moment. But then also there were several moments in that scene where Philip is kind of the, the transition point. Yeah. So it, it just, I just love scenarios like that where everybody really has to come together and, and just, do their best. Um, and uh, your other question favorite was, scene, um, favorite scene, favorite scene. Or, or episode or whatever to watch when you, when you got to see it season two. Without giving it too much thought, the, the one that's coming to mind is actually from the same episode uh, later on in the episode. I just love um, when all the disciples are sitting around the campfire and just woe is me focusing on themselves and just kind of battling it out. I think some of the best acting from the season happened in that scene uh, between Shahar, Noah, um, Liz, and uh, Paris and John and Paris and, uh, and the brothers of brothers. Yeah. All of them, like every, and mother Mary, everyone I think is at their a game in that. And I think the show's at its best when like everyone's just kind of like sitting and facing each other and like going, going at it with each other. And I think that they did some of their best work uh, of the series in that scene. And then, of course, to cap it off, when Jonathan walks in um, and everybody sort of gets to see the contrast of where they're at compared to where he's at, what his focus is on. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't try to correct them. He just walks past them and shows an example of what it is that they're supposed to be focusing on. And he's just like the, the little wave that Jonathan gives and like the little mannerisms in his face right there are so powerful. They gave me the chills. I could tear it up. And then Mother Mary washing his feet. And then everybody just has to sit in that and just like roast in that, like, you know, perfection of Jesus. And they have to kind of, you know, bow their heads and really say, okay, you know, I need to recollect myself and really find what I'm supposed to be focusing on because somewhere along the, along the way, I've lost that. And I think that's a really turning a turning moment for lots of disciples right there where they sort of are able to gather themselves and, and, and realize that they have to come together and, and be together and, and love one another. Yeah. Well, Yoshi, thank you so much uh, for being here with us. And you, you, you fit into the cast so seamlessly. And it's been a pleasure just for me personally, as I've gotten to know you better. Uh, I just love working with you and I can't wait to do it for another five seasons and and uh, who knows, maybe there's going to be more after that. But in the meantime, uh, thank you for your gift to the show, to the people watching, and uh, to me. So it means a lot how p- much passion and effort you put into it. So I love you, brother. I appreciate that. And I did all that. And I'm honored to be a part of the orchestra that you're conducting <laughs> and to um, be on this journey with all the fans as well. I'm just blown away by by this experience and i thank you for allowing me to be a part of it great all right i will see you soon isn't he cool uh such a great addition to the show and uh, i really love the opportunity for you to get to know the people behind the show and the people in front of the show the people on camera uh, to get to know their hearts get to know their stories um and you're about to hear some great stories here of people who are partnering with you to bring this show to us uh to, to to the world um, with our big documentary that I'm looking forward to debuting for you. Let me do a quick recap of what we've talked about so far tonight. Again, the big uh, new gift item is this poster book, The Chosen Poster Collection, 40 removable posters, uh, just extraordinary extraordinary imagery. Uh, it's so beautiful. I wish you could, well, you can if you want, have it in person. But some of these images are just so, so cool. Um and they remove uh, easily. Look, the dog. So many people love the dog, right? Um, they remove easily, so you don't have to rip them out or anything like that. They're, make, they're just beautiful. And uh, the poster book, again, there's, there's only a small number, a relatively small number of these that are, that are going to be $19.99. Eventually, the price will have to go up. Um, we have no choice. And 
kids activity book chosen kids activity book uh, just came out recently we got the new wristband that's been added to the collection uh, of, of uh, chosen wristbands i got the ben jesus stuff these are all things that are either brand new tonight or new over the past a uh, couple weeks and then of course the binge jesus masks i can't i don't have one to put on right now you can see it in the store uh, but as you're sending your kids to school it's those of those of whom have to be masked uh, if you ever are traveling or whatever if you have to go through uh, the unfortunate experience of wearing a mask um, at, you might as well have something good to say to people and so uh, check that out in thechosengifts.com i'll do this one more time maybe two twice i might do it at the end of the night i don't know see how I feel. www.thechosengifts.com or better yet, do it in the app, the gift factory that's in the app, because that's the same place where you hopefully are watching the live stream right now. But if you're watching on YouTube, hello and welcome. And if you're watching on Facebook, same thing. But in the app is where you can also pay it forward and qualify to be in the Feeding of the 5000 season three uh, scene that we'll be filming I'm not going to tell you which episode, but I will tell you it's going to be a big scene. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're writing it now, and it's like it's overwhelming. And so there's going to be a lot of people there, and hopefully you're going to be one of them. So pay it forward. Uh, $1,000 or higher gets you qualified for the feeding of the 5,000. And all of your questions will be answered, okay? So when you when you pay it forward 1,000 above, it qualifies you. You will get an email. It will have frequently asked questions. Please don't bombard the help button with questions about it. I promise you, your questions will be answered. We will get you updates and info on all of that. Um, documentary. So one of the things we want to do in between seasons is still give, it, give you content, give you content that's impactful. Um, you know, obviously we don't have episodes to give you, but we do want to keep giving you content beyond just me sharing with you gifts and opportunities and all that stuff. I like these family chats. They're good. Uh, we could stop right now and we would have had a nice live stream like we've had in the past. But I want to give you this opportunity. We, we put together a documentary. And one of the cool things about this is I actually, like, I was able to let my partners in The Chosen and in Angel Studios and in this a company called Magic Box, uh, which has done some great work for us in the past. Uh, they all came together and to, to put together this documentary about the Sermon on the Mount, the filming of the Sermon on the Mount. And it's called The Journey to the Sermon on the Mount. And one of the reasons it's called that is because there are five people. I, 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 is that number correct? Forgive me. If, I'm, if the number's wrong, but again, I, we're authentic here, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But we, we, there's people who we chose who have just amazing stories of what God did in their lives. And it fits into the actual Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, people were coming and probably didn't know each other's stories. They didn't know the hurts that some people were facing and the victories that some people had experienced and the opportunities that they had to experience the same thing. And so we put this t documentary together um, to show you who you are doing this with. And of course, in, a, in the process of this, of getting to know these people, you're also going to get to see some behind the scenes of the Sermon on the Mount and how it was all put together. It was really an unbelievable uh, situation. We did it in the middle of a pandemic. It got us national attention. Um, it was just quite an operation. And yet, as always, we like to make things personal. So you're going to see this through the eyes of a few people who were there and had stories of their own. So check out this documentary. And uh, it's really going to bless you. And uh, when it's over, I will come back and I want to give you a few of the ways that you can contribute to The Chosen. I've, done, I've mentioned some of these before. Just ways that you can contribute to The Chosen if you're not able to pay it forward at the level that gets you to the feeding of the 5,000. If you're not able to get some of these gifts. If you're from out of the country and you can't pay for the shipping that it requires to get some of these gifts out of the country. There are still ways that you can be part of this. Um, and, and, and I want to share that. Just I want to wrap up at the, the night with that. But in the meantime... Watch this documentary. It's a, it's it's not a full, it's not an hour and a half long type of documentary, but it's a it's about half that, and it's uh it's just got some amazing content. So, check it out. I know it'll bless you. I had first gotten a glimpse of the chosen watching the first episode. Seeing Mary's story, I was just like, that part when she's 
fighting her demons and she's being tormented in her sleep, even now I get goosebumps. I understood because that was me. If you could go back a couple of years and film me, I'd have been looking exactly like her. On the floor, hair all over the place, tormented. The Chosen series. The Chosen. The Chosen. I was captivated through the whole series. Such a beautiful depiction of Jesus. The Chosen is the first multi-season series about the life of Christ seen through the eyes of the apostles. It made history last year by becoming the largest crowd-funded media project of all time. The Chosen is kind of like you're having this scholar at your fingertips. It kept popping up on my Facebook. And I was like, oh, this looks like pretty cool. It's like a different take. The Chosen changed my life and my faith. I don't know what's going to happen this season. But it's like, I believe in the project so much. When we said we're the first ever multi-season show about the life of Christ while we were still in season one. We might have, we might have jumped through ahead a little bit. We're now going into season two. It's in every country in the world. It's millions of people. Let's see where God takes it. The stuff that we're getting is exceeding my expectation. This show continues to be better than I am. The Chosen is the highest crowdfunded media project of all time and continues to be funded by the public. This is the field of where we're doing the Sermon on the Mount. We are a show that's made by the people, and so we offered the privilege to participate in this scene, Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount involves 2,000 extras. This is a remarkable, even divine undertaking. Having the people on set that are making this show possible parallels what happened 2,000 years ago because these were people that wanted to hear the message of Jesus. They came from upwards of 200 miles away on foot. And in that crowd, there was a Noni, there was a Catherine, a Samari, a Micah, there was an Anna. There were people in that crowd that were like you and me. Matthew, look. Mary finished the notices. They're leaving to spread the word. Season one was all about assembling the team. And now we're seeing the effects of word spreading. I mean, Jesus is, for all intents and purposes, becoming a celebrity. The end of Matthew 4, before the Sermon on the Mount, talks about how far away people are coming from to see him. They're talking about Jerusalem, Judea, across the Jordan, the Decapolis. It's what's bound to happen when you start something that's open to all, truly, all people. Zealots, even tax collectors. People who have been through tough times, People both hesitant and skeptical, as well as bold and confident. People hungry to learn, as well as those learned and knowledgeable. People with crushed dreams, and people whose dreams have come true. People from all over coming to witness this, this radical preacher from Nazareth give what, what in, in my opinion, is the greatest sermon ever given. Well, you guys wanted real, authentic, and um, vulnerable, so here you go. Um, we have been waiting for our grandbaby to um, arrive. Went into labor tonight. Um, my stepson 
well, actually my bonus son, I hate the word stepson, but my bonus son, um, him and his fiance went to the hospital today, um, emergency C-section, but we lost the baby, nine months. in my RV and my best friend Melina is here from Maryland so we're just praising God this is such a joyous event and I'm so excited good morning good morning how, how you are doing you? I'm good we're gonna ask you to follow that vehicle right there okay. when you get down there stay in your vehicle we'll come get you when it's time all right the weather doesn't bother me I remember one time we had to qualify with our weapon. Um, so for non-military types, that's when we had to go to the qualification range with our M16s. And it was nothing but pure ice after a snowstorm. Pure ice. And the only heat we had was a fire barrel. That is it. So this is nothing. You guys are gonna come this way and go get security checks and get a security hand sanitizer. You can put everything right here. Umbrella. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, thank you. I encourage anybody, if you're dealing with suicide, stop and breathe. It's okay to say, hey, I need help, but I'm a soldier, I don't ask for help. I'm the one who solves problems. I'm the one person everybody goes to if there's a problem. You know, I'm the problem solver. So what happens when the problem solver has a problem? I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried. Uh, Xavier, this way. I'm kind of worried because you know, I don't, I don't want them to suffer today from the cold weather. But <laughs> I don't know which one. Take both. This Put one. this one on now. Take this one. I love you. All right, I love you, bro. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I pointed the chosen out to her because uh, it's like a different take. Get on the grass. Come on, get on the grass. And I knew that she would like it. The manager at the hotel was like, is that a horror movie? Like, no, <laughs> not a horror movie. The chosen is about Jesus Christ. I love the chosen. <laughs> That's why I'm here, obviously. <laughs> I was learning these principles in the Bible, and I was watching the show, and it made the Bible so alive. Hey, it's Dallas, and welcome Hello, Dallas. to the bus. <laughs> now that that part is over, the COVID and the logistics and all that kind of stuff, you are well on your way towards the rest of the day, which should be much better. Now, I'm, I'm sitting here on set right now, recording this a few days in advance. I mean, I'm looking at the weather app right now, and it's telling me that it's probably going to rain today. Yeah. It's probably going to, you know, it even says potential thunderstorms. So if it's already raining, I'm really sorry. If it's going to rain later today, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, we're going to do everything okay. we can to protect you. But ultimately, this might be just kind of a rainy day. And I don't know, this is God's project, so I'm kind of submitting it to him. I'm Catherine Menning. I'm 22 years old. I think the main thing that I tell everybody when I talk to them about The Chosen is The Chosen has literally changed my life and my faith. At the age of 19, even though I had experience with God and I knew he was real in, in his presence and everything, I was out of church. Yeah, I grew up going to church. I mean, I, there was never a time in my life I was never in church. I was born in Ukraine, but both of my parents are Vietnamese, so we were raised Buddhist. I love Bible projects, Bible movies, Bible miniseries, all that stuff. Anything I can get my hands on about the Gospels and Jesus, like, I love it. I was like, okay, this has been popping up constantly. Like, I'll see ads for it, and I've some people were talking about it. I was like, okay, I got to figure out what this is all about. So I sat down and watched one episode. And literally that, I, I had to watch another one after that and another one after that. 
And just the way that they make not only Jesus, but the disciples real and relatable and like show the struggles, show them being human and show the struggles that, that I struggle with. It just like, wow, they were human. They were like me. It's, oh, very striking. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Wouldn't that lead to an entire population of people walking around with only one eye? Oh, and this one. If anyone were to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well? I know a lot of lawyers who would really struggle with that one. I'm not here to be sentimental and soothing. I'm here to start a revolution. I'm talking about a radical shift. Did you think I was just going to come here and say, hey everyone, just uh, keep doing what you've been doing for the last thousand years since it's been going so great. Certainly gets your attention, doesn't it? Oh, all these steps, especially when you're getting over COVID. Oh my gosh, that was a hard January. It was New Year's, and that's the sickest I've ever been in my life. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. This job is hard. It is not for the faint of heart. <sighs> All right, there you go. Anybody else need your lockers open? Are you guys good? I was working at a university. I was the director of career services, and I had been doing it for about five, six years, and um, my mother-in-law, I didn't know it was in this adult program here. Then she kept telling me, like, you need to be here, you need to work here. I went to her graduation. Clear as day, I heard the Lord tell me, this is where you're supposed to be. This is your assignment. I wasn't trying to work there in the first place. I was cool working higher ed, going to Vegas for conferences, you know, making the big bucks. Oh, yeah. Our students don't even have the basics. No running water, food, internet access, or computers. Y'all good? And I literally drove through Cincinnati, dropping off packets for the kids and picking them up. Oh, hold on. All right, gotta make sure. Hey, Miss Owens, mind if I come in? All right. To put me at a high school where I gotta break up fights? Are you serious? God was like, mm-mm. -mm. This is where you need to be. That's why everybody loves who you are and Aww. what you do for these kids. <laughs> you are the best dean ever. In 25 years of teaching, I've not been blessed with a leader like you. Oh, thank you. You're going to make me cry. I know. It's all right, though. I know. Because you're strong and you're a warrior and you can do it. <laughs> when I was younger, I was told I couldn't have kids. So I wanted to be a mixture of Foxy Brown and MacGyver with a little bit of Claire Huxtable thrown in, okay? I figured that was like the perfect person, and I kind of found that in the military. But I ended up pregnant with Malachi. I had him, and then <laughs> September 11th hit. I remember sitting in, you know, at work, watching 9-11 hit. And I just knew in my gut I was going to have to leave my son. Mama! Huh? Your boss is going fast. I moved to the States. I was by myself. Um, my English, I thought that I knew English. <laughs> it wasn't that great. I'm taking classes and, and I don't understand nothing. You know, it was a rough moment. I had an opportunity to come to the United States as an exchange student. I came here, I started working, and I got lost in that striving for success. I was four, five years old, and my dad took me to the circus. He took a different woman that was my mom, and it was the worst experience of my life because this is not my mom. What are you doing with this woman, not my mom? Marriage to me was, it was, it was a mess. And so I never had a relationship last more than three months. I don't know if it was a self-destruct button, but I knew at three months, okay, it's done. 
moving on. And then Irma and I met online back before online thing was even a thing. We just talked. And that's all we had. We talked and we got to know each other. It was just unreal. It's like, wow, this woman's amazing. And she's different. Things kept progressing. And I proposed to her. But eventually, I mean, we were they're going to our 10th year of marriage. Things are like a partnership instead of more of a marriage. And I was getting attention from, from another woman. Oh, a lot of people. Nice. You see, everybody got their costumes on and everything. Back in 2011, I was diagnosed with PCOS, which stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. One of the parts of PCOS is that you are either infertile or you're gonna struggle with infertility and weight gain was another one of those side effects. I remember standing in the shower, just sobbing, <laughs> sobbing. Why God, why me? I want, uh, I want to be normal. I will look at other people who are healthy and have no problems and I want it to be like them. I love kids. And when I discovered that that might not be a possibility, it was, it was heartbreaking. I want to be able to hold a baby in my arms and see that they're mine and to love them like my parents have loved me and to raise them to teach them about Jesus, to tell them the stories about a God who loves us no matter what. I had Malachi on Veterans Day, and when he was 18 months old, we got our orders to deploy. Deployment, it's not like how you think it's, it's in the movies, okay? We were leaving the airport on buses, driving to this base, and we were taking pictures and we went to pull back the curtain and our security detail was like, close that, they're sniping. They would watch for the buses that would come down that road. And if they saw it was American soldiers on there, they would shoot at the buses. We were stationed literally on the border of Iraq and Kuwait. And then one night I was in my tent um, and my tent was, uh, you know, big, huge tent, and male and females were in the tent, so we didn't have separate females, we didn't have separate males, we were all just squished in, one unit into two tents. And my cot was by the back door. And one night, um, I was assaulted in my tent. Um, and that's where the PTSD comes in. Um, a lot of it I blacked out on, eventually through lots of Therapy. I've been in therapy since then. Some stuff has come back, and, and it's hard with my husband. Like, he'll tell you I'll wake up screaming in the middle of the night with nightmares. Um, he can't wake me up, just, like, wake me up because I'll wake up fighting, you know? Um, and it's hard because uh, one night I was in the barracks, and somebody accidentally hit my tent, and I sat straight up and started screaming. And it's so embarrassing because you're a soldier. And then, you know, not just a soldier, I'm a sergeant. So I'm having nightmares, all kinds of stuff. It's starting to rain. So now I gotta uh, weatherproof myself real quick. And I have anxiety and I don't do well with crowds. We go to the movies, I'm in the top seat, very back with my back against the wall. So I'm not vulnerable. So I'm literally thinking about Sermon on the Mount grounding techniques, breathing techniques. <sighs> okay, God, how am I gonna do this? May I ask why you keep coming down to look at the camp? They've all gone, haven't they? They have. Hey, Tuesday, Jesus of Nazareth, go as him. Right that way, yeah, Tuesday.
Yeah, we're in the park. Um, this is the park where they're gonna be filming. Um, I don't think they have toys, but I know there's stuff to do around. We all knew we were crazy to try to pull this off. We knew that this was a, a, a ridiculous idea. 3,000 people coming to Texas have to be tested. They have to get a swab shoved up their nose. That's a lot of people. So we started bringing them in at like 5 a.m. And then they come in waves. It was a shoot day unlike anything that I've ever experienced in my career, ever. And, and this happened right at the beginning of an historic cold spell in Dallas-Fort Worth area. And it was miserable that day. Yeah, so it was like insane. So a couple of vehicles almost took us out. Oh no. So by the time I get to the airport, I'm all like, oh my oh, God. I made it. On, on the edge a little bit. Yeah. So how was your guys, you no, know, rival getting out? We got maybe four. Really? I would have yeah. killed for four. Yeah. <laughs> I think something happened because it's supposed to be more, but yeah, we didn't get that many. We, we have a protected bubble around Zionsville. Yeah. <laughs> Where we live. Country that so you sent it all to me. Yes. That's yes. what it was. Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Man. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. We want this to go well. You know, there, there is a weight that is on our shoulders in doing this show because we want to deliver the authentic Jesus to an audience worldwide. And this day is set in stone because people have booked their travel. I mean, Samari coming from Puerto Rico, we can't all of a sudden just, well, we'll do it next week. <laughs> Keep your hotel a little bit longer. People came from Canada. People came from, you know, Minnesota, New York, California. I mean, all over. I think some people even came from Brazil. We can't push this off a week. We can't push it off a day. It has to happen right then and there. Have we been advertising something that might not happen? What if no one shows up? What if everyone shows up? Yeah, my adrenaline is like on a thousand right now. Like, I can't, like, I probably need to calm down. You know what's gonna happen is... Justin! Bring it in! So good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a big show, show for, you for you today. It's, it's huge. 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 We've, got We've got some, some comedians. comedians. We've got, got some musical band. acts. We even have the star of today's show, The Heat Lamps. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for The Heat Lamps. Just had a lot of Toe warmers there used to keep warm. I did go out last night and buy some thermal underwear, which I'm glad I did. <laughs> you don't want it? It's really cold. Like, this is nothing like Puerto Rico. We've got coffee and hot chocolate down here. I'm gonna put the mask then. Let's put the mask. Why? That way. <laughs> Until later, Toma. What are those? Okay. What is this? <laughs> That's your. I move to the state. I feel alone, you know, like, and you don't have your family, you don't have your friends. The culture is so different. And you get into one thing to another. And yeah, I, I did drink. Um, my thing more than drinking was smoking weed. It kind of relaxed me, but it led me also to other stuff, you know, that, that they kind of like take you. You stumble and, and, and then you don't realize that you're like at the bottom. And then you wake up one day, you're like, wow. You know, all, all of this has taken from me, from, from who I am. In just two months, I tripled the income that I used to make. I was able to quit all my jobs, all three of them. <laughs> I was selling weight loss products 
on Facebook and I was adding people so that I can expand my business. And I added my now husband by accident on Facebook. So I decided to just purchase a weight loss product. I didn't need it, but I decided to just go ahead and try. Some way, somehow, you know, within a couple months, I was just promoted very quickly. And the CEO had asked me to uh, come to the annual conference and be interviewed in front of about five, 600 people. And I thought, like, okay, I'm on stage, you know, and there's hundreds of people and there's lights and cameras and it should feel good, but for some reason it doesn't. I would be happy for a moment and then always search for the next thing. Like I was never fully satisfied. I felt such a big hole in my heart. And this is where my true soul searching started. I started following Hinduism and Reiki healing and crystals. And I would carry those things around. This rock will bring me luck or love or whatever. And I was questioning the meaning of life and why we're here and what's the purpose. I saw her posting up a lot of new age uh, things on Facebook. And I felt so strongly, like a, like a strong conviction that there was something wrong. So I reached out to her and asked if, if, if she wanted to pray and wanted to know um, Jesus. And she reluctantly said yes. And so I prayed for her. I just got down on my knees and I prayed to God that, uh, that he saved her, that he let her know who he really is. I was doing the mission trips. So I was traveling to Haiti and basically I was never home. I was gonna get a master's before I was 40 and I was going to climb the corporate ladder and I was lead the Latinos and make a difference and I was going to Haiti and saving kids. What evidence in our life is there that we're married? There wasn't. She did her thing, I did my thing. We make sure the kids are taken care of. And I was getting attention. So I said, okay, I can do that. I can keep this hidden. I can keep this. <sighs> my kids, I mean, I knew they were being fed and that Micah was taking care of them, but Irene, my oldest, she's like, yeah, I remember, we didn't see you for weeks. I got a text that I didn't know came in and she got it and she's like, oh, and that was it. If it was just physical, I think it would have been not as bad, but the emotional part is what hurt her the most. It's like, oh my gosh. I'm my dad. I am my dad. I had first gotten a glimpse of The Chosen watching the first episode. Seeing Mary's story, even now I get goosebumps. Her PTSD was from her assault from the Romans. If you could go back a couple of years and film me, I'd have been looking exactly like her. On the floor, hair all over the place, tormented. Anyway, I was assaulted. And the military at the time, we didn't talk about that stuff. I just shoved it down. What they don't tell you is when you shove stuff down, it comes out one way or another. Um, so I, I shoved it down, went about my daily life, came home, found out Malachi was autistic. Depression hits and I start drinking just to survive. Marriage blew up. Me and my ex-husband got a divorce. I had already set up plenty of life insurance for my son. I knew my family would be taken care of and I tried to overdose on my sleep medication. <laughs> the one thing about suicide, it's scarier to live. And I had taken like five sleeping pills and I was on my way to finishing off the bottle. And at this point, my cousin called me. She said, the Lord told me to call you right now. You better not. And she hightailed it over and she stopped me. More than anything, you want the pain to stop. You want the pain to stop, you want the fear to stop, but you don't know how to do it. Mary. 
Mary of Magdala. And the scene where Jesus came in and he just held her. When I finally got back to church, my pastor at the time held me like that. I didn't even know this guy. I wasn't even a member. He looked at me, he said, God said, you just need some love. And he just held me like that. And it was just like that in that scene. And I just broke down. And that was the first time I had stepped foot in the church in years. Um, I was here with Xavier. He just left. You know, like we're not used to this cold weather. And he's three, so he's like everywhere, you know? And I was trying to like keep it together, but I really couldn't. <laughs> and I called my husband. I was like, is there any way that you can pick him up and see if I can just stay and finish today? And he's like, yeah. For like 10 or so years, I was there out and I was um, in the state. So at the end, I was like, I need to go back. And I mean, if it's not now, like I just knew it was my mom. I felt that I wasn't worthy, you know, and I, the presence of God was in the church and, and I knew it, but I, I feel I couldn't get close to it. And that's when he started working with me. I learned that God is love, that he's not a God that is like watching me just to see when I'm gonna mess up, you know? So, so I relearned just love. God talks to her in a different way than most people that I know that are Christians. She's very, very devoted and every morning she prays. I mean, she'll cry about what she's praying about. When I was, kind of confused and lost. My dear husband, he heard from God to send me a Bible, a King James Bible, and I do not understand it. I grabbed the Bible, I went into my closet, and I said, you know, guy, Jesus, God, and I said, I don't know who you are, I don't know if this is real, you know, but if you're real, I kind of need help. And I don't know, something just hit me so hard and that Bible was covered with salty tears. Hello, 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 Georgia family. So, the weather. I didn't choose the weather. Uh, this wouldn't have been my choice. But do you know how many times in the chosen my choice has not worked out? and something else has come along at the last minute and made it significantly better than I was doing. When I start to think about the future, one of the voices that would be in my head was, there's not gonna be a guy who's gonna love you, and there's not gonna be a guy who's gonna wanna marry you or date you, because when you tell him that you possibly can't have kids, he's not gonna wanna be with you. And I see my friends who are younger and older than me get married, get engaged, have kids, start families. And sometimes I like, is there something wrong with me that, I, that I'm not getting that? It's hard not to compare myself because I want those things. That causes me to freak out and try to figure out how to manage my future instead of allowing God to manage it and worry about it and me just taking it one day at a time. We're gonna do this shot. We're all as a group, you're gonna follow me oh, over that hill. I'm going to spread you guys out in a big, long line. My parents got divorced, so I never wanted to be divorced. And so when he put divorce on the table, that's what woke me up. And the chosen pair is just so deep and dead. He can't catch fish. His whole future is going to be gone. You've been different. Faith isn't gonna get me more fish. I grew up going to church, but it wasn't until going through the affair where I realized, yeah, you're doing church. You're not following Christ. You have not pursued the Lord lately. Not like the man that I met. That is why you are stuck and you feel desperate and now you're off to try to fix it yourself again. I don't want to say that I chose Christ because I know he chose me, but I finally stopped running away from him. Put that down for a catch. 
I realized for the first time, if it's gonna save my marriage, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to save my marriage. If it means doing things I don't wanna do, it's okay because doing what I wanna do led me to the mess in the first place. What do you want from me? Follow me. October 2nd, 2011, walking to Traders Point Christian Church for the first time. And it wasn't, it didn't go easily. I mean, I went kicking and screaming. Irma and I came face to face with Jesus Christ for the first time. It was life changing. It changed the trajectory of my life. You're still gonna have struggles. You're still gonna have problems. You're still gonna have issues, but it's okay. God told me one time, it's like going to your grandma's house. She don't care if it's been a day, a week, a month, two years. I'm here for you, just enjoy my presence. Literally, my repentance was, Jesus, I'm so sorry I didn't believe in you. Guide my path. It's been cool to hear that still small voice saying you are loved, you are cared for, I love you, I've created you. You have help, you've got backup. I'm not alone. The walk through up here, going through the weeds and all that stuff. I'm like, but isn't that our walk as believers? It's not going to be easy. Why do we expect today to be any different? Yeah, come on in, and we'll set you in right there. Okay, really uh, all of you, just, just squeeze in. That's how you warm up. It's hard for me to believe in something that I can't see, but I, I definitely am starting to feel things more as I get older. The change that happened with her—that's amazing. I don't understand it myself. But here is what I can tell you. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. Matthew. Matthew. Bye-bye. I've got it. <clears throat> the opening? Yes. What is it? A map. The what? Directions. Where people should look to find me. Ready? Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You 
You have heard that it was said. You shall not murder. And everyone who murders will be liable to judgment. I would just love to sit there and hear the Sermon of the Mount preached several times. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How did it feel to have Jonathan come out and start giving lines? Like that was a little surreal. I'm like, don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera. You cannot look at the camera because you're so drawn to, to yeah, that, so it's good. So excited. So cool. Season two, Sermon on the Mount. It's so important. I could be part of that. Mm -hmm. Good. Blessed are they who mourn. Good. Good. This whole experience has just been surreal from the tragedy with our family we had this week and now being here and the support of my family and it just really shows you how much God loves you that through tragedy and everything else that happens, he still gives you that, that little glimpse, like, it's going to be all right. It's, it's going to be OK. It's mind blowing. God has just taken care of every little thing for us. It is cold. But we're from Minnesota. We've dealt with worse. I'm Catherine. Nice to meet you. And I know we're not going to be able to, to, to talk to the actors or to Dallas, which is fine. <laughs> Thank you guys for being Thank here. You so I know much. it's so Thank cold. You. Hi there. Hi. Hi. I'll give you, I'll give you yes, a Yes, we hugged. <laughs> so where are you coming from? Cincinnati, snowstorm, oh, nice. 10 inches. So this is nothing. Nothing. And I'm retired Army, so this is good trainer well, weather. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And thank you for how much you supported the show and how passionate you've been for the show. It really means a lot. This is surreal. Well, I'm so glad you're here. It's so thank good to you. talk to you. All right, hold on. I'm about to have a freak out moment real quick. <laughs> This right here, this is ministry. We are literally bringing Christ to everybody. <laughs> Thank you, guys. The journey has been marvelously amazing with signs and wonders and what God has done. The forgiveness of the other person, it took about two and a half years. We had the, the counseling, and I've seen Micah grow so much. I will never stop giving praise to Jesus that he never gave up on me. God's plan isn't our plan, but he is faithful and he loves me no matter what. Even my mentor, she and her husband struggled with infertility and God led them to adopt. And I would love to adopt because I think adoption is such a beautiful picture of what God has done for us. How he takes us and through Jesus, he adopts us and claims us as his. When you were hanging out and you were doing all this stuff, you thought that was life, you know? You thought that was the most awesome thing. And you realize when you have this, this is what God created to be. And it's awesome and it makes you feel complete and it's just happy. It's not great all the time, but it's beautiful. Your devotion to our family and to God that he gets to see, that I get to see, that you do every day, it's a big deal, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I love you. I still go through therapy. I still take my medication when I need it. Hey, what's going on? I have issues, okay? But God is the God of issues. He will take your issues and he will use your issues. What you and Miss Dunning talk about? Rashad, he had an attitude. Oh, he had an attitude? Oh, well, yeah. he'll be okay. <laughs> Oh, so that's funny that he had an attitude? Yeah. <laughs> so now at church, I'm teaching adult Sunday school now. I'm about to be ordained as a minister. And it's like, who, me? All because I said yes. Oh, my tall child. <laughs> oh. So believe it or not, he used to be nonverbal. And now look at him. I'm just saying yes. I'm putting on my seatbelt. I don't know what he has in store for me, but I'm along for the ride. I just love that we are in many ways building a family. It's a huge family. It's millions of people around the world, but ultimately just like the show, we're trying to make things personal and intimate. 
And um, that's what that documentary is about. So I hope that this not only connected you to those people, those specific people who um, have their own stories, but to the notion that you are part of something bigger and that their stories are your stories, just like uh, the disciples and just like the people from the show in the first century and from the Bible. So I hope that that uh, blessed you. Um, I want to read this letter as we wrap up here before I give you just the, the, the notes about how you can be more involved in the show. Um, we got this l a letter from a person named Clinton who talks about, uh, I, I won't read you this part, but he talked about how he was originally volunteering and leading some teams for the translation to get this in front of more people. Um, and he said, nevertheless, I was shown that my loaves and fishes, his contributions to the translation efforts, uh, were just good for that summer. So for personal, marital, and financial healing and health reasons, I turned over the leadership of the volunteer translation team after completing translation work on episodes five through eight of season one, I stepped down. Since focusing on improving financially, my ambassadorship has been back to being a simple fan. So this is, again, someone who's not contributing financially to the show, which is totally fine. For some reason, it was by episode seven that I was now touched on a heart level, deeper than just a binging fan. The lead-in to teach us how to pray, this is episode seven of season two, spoke to me. It awakened my own realization how I had been like the disciples and revived all of what I learned about effective praying, and thus my desire to pray that way again. A couple of episodes starting sp started speaking to me personally. The reveal of Judas in episode 8 and his likable portrayal showed I could have been him too. I also realized how known stories of other disciples, like Peter and Paul's, can illustrate what could have happened if Judas just returned and not killed himself. This helped take my attention away from a doomed mentality. I also guess with Mary Magdalene's arc from episodes five to six being one of those could have illustrations, it led me to also see she was me, as I had my own relapse early this year too. Like Judas, it was a suicide attempt. But in the form of an Elijah drama, walk out on my family. This, is, this explains the summer ear healing course we are in. My Let's see, I'm sorry. My bring back 24 hours, my bring back, so his bring back 24 hours later differed from hers in that it played out similar to Elijah's story. So you can read that in the, in, in the Old Testament. But I saw that I received the same forgiveness and assurance. And as Mary had to endure her treatment from others from the group as a consequence, but displayed firm faith from the forgiveness she received, I realized that's what I have had also, as I've also faced the frequent honest feedback from the deep hurt my brief abandonment still caused. The consequences don't go away. Um, but forgiveness comes, and that assurance encouraged me to keep that up. The post-loaves and bread period has also helped me understand from episode 8, when Jesus said to Matthew, I don't want passive followers, and if I may add, this is him talking, who are just binging Jesus. I'm learning in alignment with the concluding parable of the Sermon on the Mount. It's he not only who binges, but also basks to obey my words, and who is like one who builds his house on the rock which stands against rains, floods, and winds. You can see that in the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospels. And yes, at the beginning of season three, my conclusion, binge, then bask and obey Jesus. I just wanted you to know about that, how there's so many different ways to contribute to the project and how uh, this is compelling people and can compel you to go even deeper and to dig even deeper. Um, and that's, that's just meaningful. That's just so, it's just so important that you know that it's not just paying it forward, it's not just giving the gifts. Uh, we, we give this gift, we give, we give this list occasionally on ways to contribute and help the show. And uh, sometimes it gets updated and combined. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we list this. Number one is paying it forward, of course, which we've talked about. Paying it forward a thousand above now gets you to the feeding of the 5,000 in season three. You can buy the gifts, thechosengifts.com and the app. I'm not, gonna say, I'm not gonna sing the jingle again, but I will show you the poster book that you can get at thechosengifts.com. Um, following and liking and sharing our videos and our posts on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, all of these things matter. They really do. They do get in front of more people. We have so many people who say that they came across the show because of seeing it on, sh on Facebook, seeing it come across their feed. And when you're watching this doc, when you're watching this live stream, it is getting in front of more people just by you watching it. But clicking that subscription bell uh, button, clicking the notification bell, um, all of that makes a difference. Going to the App Store or Google Play and giving a review, giving a five-star review there, 
show makes that makes the app get higher on the lists. We are right now in the top 50 entertainment apps in the world. And they will keep it there as long as you're downloading the app, but also as rating it and reviewing it. It just takes a moment and it really does make a difference. And so if you're not able to pay it forward and do those other things, this is a way you can genuinely make a difference and contribute more to the show. Um, another thing that you can do is following and liking and sharing and commenting on others' channels. So there are several YouTube channels that have grown because of their analysis of The Chosen, their insights into The Chosen. So I'm, I'm not going to give list all of them now because I would probably leave some out accidentally. But if you just look up The Chosen on YouTube or The Chosen Reaction or The Chosen Deep Dive or whatever, you will find some fantastic channels that, are, that, that I've even gotten a lot out of, that I've learned from, that I've even appeared on occasionally because I've thought they were so great. So check those out and, and comment on them and tell them that you appreciate what they're doing and you tell them that you appreciate the analysis and, uh, because that encourages them to keep doing it. And so look that up. And then when, when I, whenever I or one of the cast or one of our producers does a interview on a podcast, we'll usually post those, news interviews, um, blog articles. Anytime anyone writes about The Chosen or posts about The Chosen, comment, like it, let them know you love it. That will, tell, that will encourage them to keep doing it. And that will cause other people to want to do it as well. So that makes a huge difference. It really does. It is a big gift to the show and a big... Um, but it's not a gift that doesn't come back. It makes sure that the show continues to grow and expand and get in front of more people. Um, joining on, on, on Facebook, you go to the fan club. You just look up the Chosen Fan Club or the Chosen Auction Group. There's also uh, a, a group called the Chosen Activation Group. Look up these groups on, on Facebook. Just look up the Chosen. You'll find different groups that are growing. That um, Being part of that allows you to see more content. Um, we come sometimes stop by and the, there are fans there who are engaging about the show and then you see a lot of people come in and ask questions. So you'll see a newcomer come into the fan club or the activation group or whatever and they'll say, um, I have a question or I'm just starting reading the Bible. Can you help me? And there, you can contribute to helping people who are just discovering the show and you can engage even more deeply into the sh uh, with the show. So that's a huge thing that you can do. Um, and then in the app, if you go to the share, if you click on the share button in the app, so go to the app, look for that share button, click it, and it will give you these tools like the trailer and scenes from that you can post natively or organically to your social media. You can download it, you can text it to somebody, but these are ways to give it directly to people. So sharing it through the app is a huge factor as well. And then of course, last but certainly not least, if anything most, is pray. Um, we covet your prayers so deeply. Um, I need them now as, we, as, as, as I write. My co-writers and I need them desperately. My family, as we have just moved and are in a, in a small rental house while we're waiting for a house to be built, um, the travel, all of the, the impact that the show is having around the world, our cast and crew, as, as they wait for season three to get going, um, there's so many things that you can pray for for the show and pray for the audience, pray for the people to be impacted. Everything matters. Everything counts. And uh, this is a movement. And, um, you know, my T-shirt says Binge Jesus because it's about much more than just the show. And you can contribute in so many more ways than just getting gifts or paying it forward. So I hope that you participate with us in that. Thank you so much. It's not your job to feed the 5,000. It's only to provide the loaves and fish. God bless you, and I will see you soon. <laughs> Down in the water, watch the mud rise up. Dress me like a lamb for the slaughter, pour me in your cup. Should have known we'd bring trouble, and trouble gonna find you here. Trouble. I was one way when you found me, I was not the one you see. And the only thing that happened was the stranger in. And you can say your eyes are open You might think your hands are clean Till the wind blows in To kick something I'm scraping the bottom, make my well run dry Shake them coins, I know where you got them Kiss me, kiss me, bye I should've known we'd bring trouble Trouble
trouble gonna find you here Yeah, trouble Yeah.